The annual blue-white game is essential to Penn State football recruiting, but is this list of prospects in attendance as strong as it's been in years past? You are Locked On Nittany Lions, your daily podcast on the Penn State Nittany Lions, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. The blue-white game, it caps off the spring football season. It's also a big moment for recruiting. This is Locked On and Nittany Lions. I'm your host, Zach Seiko. Thanks so much for making us your first listen and watch every single day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, win or lose. All you got to do is visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. And he's back. Quickly, as we just did a conversation about how the, the roster is going to look with the scholarship counts. Now we're going to preview the blue-white game itself, the prospects that are going to be there. He is from HappyValleyInsider.com. That is Dylan Halligan Crowley. And help out this show. Like this episode. Share it with friends and family. Let us know in the comments what you are looking forward to from the blue-white game as we're going to talk about it and preview all of it here. Starting with the prospects. There are a lot of, a lot of names to know, Dylan. And, and, you know, covering Penn State football and particularly recruiting, there's a lot of talent. There's the commit. There's players that are currently committed in the class of 2024 and 2025 that will be on campus. But everyone's more concerned about the uncommitted players. And there's going to be a lot of them from 2025, 2026, 27, 28. Right. What are, yeah. Who are some of the select names here in, in this group of players that Penn State, you know, is they're heavily involved in, with their recruiting or Penn State would be fortunate to land a commitment from them. Yeah, so I mean, it, for as of right now, it is definitely a little bit more of a subdued list compared mm. to the past, but still going to be a, a solid week for Penn State. They're still going to have a lot of prospects on campus that will probably be confirmed here in the next 48 hours. Yeah. But uh, as of right now, just a couple names that stand out to me, 2025 recruiting class, wide receiver Keanu Johnson out of uh, Connecticut, three-star prospect who, uh, you okay. know, concerned Penn State's wide receiver recruiting. They are in it for a couple of guys, but Johnson's, I think, one of those guys who's kind of hanging around probably of the middle of the board. Uh, just a name to watch going forward, not in terms of commitment, but depending on how things could play out, I could see uh, Johnson, you know, maybe being a guy that a little bit down the board okay. if they miss on a couple guys could be, be somebody to at least monitor but he'll be back on campus. Um, a really interesting one is Miami Central uh, defensive lineman Randy uh, Adarika. Yes. Uh, yes. Now, he is a top 100 prospect here on Rivals uh, and is somebody that actually our Miami Hurricanes expert, uh, one of our Miami Hurricanes experts, Marcus mm -hmm. Benjamin, actually placed a future cast in for uh, – recently on monday uh for penn state to land him uh and now he's gonna about be about time just, since they about time since they don't have any defensive line commits in that class of 2025 right and this was one that uh just you know marcus entered a future cast for miami on march 24th so that's mm -hmm. kind of a quick turnaround from the last time we uh or the last time he put in a future cast Top 100 prospect, number 91 in the country, number six defensive, strong side defensive end, top 20 player in the state of Florida. He has an official visit to Penn State as well, set for June. So I, I'm still, you know, looking and asking around about that one. But mm -hmm. um, Marcus and our Miami side are very, you know, uh, yeah. got strong ties in that Miami area in the high school ranks. So uh, that's definitely one to watch going forward. Uh, also, uh, in the secondary, cornerback uh, LaRue Zamorano will be okay. back on campus. Top 250 prospect. Uh, does not have official visit set to Penn State, but perhaps if this visit goes well, that could change. Number 225 nationally, number uh, a top 25 cornerback in the country, top 25 player mm. in the state of California. Uh, yeah. A long ways from California, but we could, we'll see how that one goes. And then 2026 class. Two guys I think Penn State are doing very well early on for Virginia offensive lineman Carter Scruggs. 
uh, yes. which is back on campus. Uh, he's getting some SEC interest, but Penn State doing a very good job early, as well as with cornerback Damari Clements, a little bit of a smaller cornerback, but somebody who's been on campus a ton, somebody who loves Penn State every time he visits. I'll uh, be interested to see how he uh, – you know his what his stand on the board is going forward mm-hmm. over the next couple months as he continues to grow and develop. Uh, but it's somebody who's been to campus a ton, always has great things to say about Penn State. And you know, even if he's a little bit further down the board, it's usually a good sign if they are you know bringing a kid back to campus uh, this many times. Yeah, I, I do agree with you from the fact of there aren't a lot of major names. Just, yeah. just note, just in terms of premier targets, like these, these are all quality players. It's not to disrespect the players that are coming to the blue and white game, but it just, I, I think of the names that Penn state, you know, has at the top of their big board. And I know, and I know it's going to be a stretch to get them, but I think of Quincy Porter, for example, right? Not at the blue white game, uh, Malik Washington quarterback, who I've mentioned a lot of times on this podcast. I'm sure you've mentioned a lot of times at happy Valley insider.com with Matt Zollers going to Missouri. And Washington is opting to go to Virginia Tech's spring game. Oh, man, Brent Pry, head-to-head recruiting battle here. Who's going to win, right? So it's just the, the, the names that are missing, I think, are almost just as intriguing, if not more, than the ones that are present. And I think part of this has been calculated. I, I think Penn State, with some of those prospects, would rather bring them on campus when it's a, a group of 10 recruit or so get some okay. of that more personal one-on-one time with these prospects yeah. and, yeah. and and use that as a recruiting visit would they like to get them in front of you know a beaver stadium crowd yes but at the same time it is the spring game it's sp- maybe it's just my personal feeling i feel like the spring game hasn't had the same level of energy perhaps no. over the last few years as compared to uh, before that. That's mm-hmm. not necessarily a bad thing. But I, I don't think the spring game itself has a huge impact yeah. on recruiting. A lot of these kids have already been on campus for games. They've seen mm-hmm. what Beaver Stadium is like in the fall. And that atmosphere is way more important than a spring game atmosphere, um, especially when there's probably going to be a 30, 40,000 person difference between the yes. two yes. Uh, at least um the, even if it's bad weather um so uh yeah I, I think i think they'd rather to a degree get those more personal visits uh throughout the spring um and then you know uh capitalize with official visits if they can you can check out that full list of visits for the blue white game at happy valley insider.com but just those are a few names to know that are going to be present for the 2024 blue white game. Now let's preview the game itself, right? What's going to happen players to that are going to stand out that are currently on the Penn state football roster. Dylan and I are going to discuss that next here on locked on Disney lions. Today's episode is brought to you by eBay motors, passion, drive, patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to its peak performance from superchargers to roof racks to exhaust kits led headlights and so much more whether you're into speed power or style ebay motors has got you covered with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die you'll always find exactly what you're looking for and with ebay guaranteed fit your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or you get your money back because with ebay motors you're burning rubber not cash With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it is easy to make your car into that MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. That is ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. And eBay guaranteed fit is only available to U.S. customers. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. You got to download the Game Time app because buying tickets to your favorite events should not be stressful. And now... Game Time is an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets even faster and easier. And prices on the Game Time app actually go down closer as it gets to first pitch. Now, I've used the Game Time app before. I've bought tickets to baseball games. I've bought tickets to Penn State games with Game Time. Game Time has a lot of incredible features. First, the last minute deals. So game time is always trying to find you ways to save money on your tickets. Well, you get last minute deals. You can save up to 60% 
I'm buying tickets for last minute events for sports, concerts, comedy, theater, everything near you. And then there's flash deals on top of some of those discounts. Save even more with exclusive in-app deals on select seats ahead of the game. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time to all of your favorite events. Got to download the Game Time app, create an account, and use promo code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create that account, redeem code Locked On College for twenty dollars off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. So how's the blue-white game going to unfold? Well, a little bit of weather implications. That could change it. Is the roster fully healthy to actually do a traditional blue-white game before we get back into it? Are you watching Fox Sports and ESPN on your TV all day long? Do you ever have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Then make the switch to Locked On Sports Today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you each and every day to bring you the biggest stories in sports without all of the Screaming, Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, news, and it's streaming 24-7 on YouTube and now on the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team each and every day. Again, comment your thoughts on the blue-white game, what you're expecting, players that you're looking to watch for on Saturday. And if you want to keep up with Dylan, you can follow him on X and check out his work at happyvalleyinsider.com. So the blue-white game, as far as an overview goes, uh, James was asked about it. Is this going to be a traditional blue-white game? Or are they going to do that weird scoring again? I want to remind people. I want to remind people that the blue-white game is not an actual game. It is not even a scrimmage to an extent. It is a glorified practice. It is the 15th and final practice of the spring season. So th this is it. Like This is the end of the spring season. You get 15 total. And this is what Penn State does as tradition. And, I, and I'm glad, you know, all the programs across the country do, you know, different, you know, what do the Buckeyes do? Scarlet and gray, right? I don't want to talk about Ohio State here, but you, you get my point is that it, in Penn State's case, this is just, this is a practice with a few, a little, a few more bells and whistles so that the fans, I'm expecting about 40 to 50,000 here. But the, I think the weather is interesting because I didn't get the chance to ask James this, but we could see wind gusts, so bring your windbreakers. We could see wind gusts over 25 miles an hour. Does that mean Penn State is going to be? Because I would like to see Penn State throw the ball a little more in the blue-white game. I would like to see Drew Aller, Bo Perbula, Ethan Grunkmeyer. They're, they're not going to be hit in this game whatsoever. They're going to have the penny on to protect them. But if the wind gusts are going to be that high outside of the football season, I think that is a great opportunity to try to have Drew Aller, Bo Perbula, and Ethan Grunkmeyer throw into the elements. That's what I want to see when they play this blue white game. Yeah, I think that's going to be really interesting, especially because you, you know, you've been to practice, I've been to practice. They have not really thrown the ball deep during our parts of practice. It's just been, throw it deep, man. What are they doing? Just throw it deep. It's been five, 10 yard routes yep. at most. Um, and I, I mean, to succeed in today's college football, you need to throw deep. Um, you need to be able to throw deep when you have to. Yep. Um, we never saw that last year, really, and um, and we'll see if we see it this year. But I, I'll be very interested to see if how much we'll see of the passing offense. What types of throws are they going to be trying to make throughout this practice slash game? Um, but even beyond that, honestly, we know. I don't think we're going to learn much about Drew in this game. This practice, no, game, right? don't expect that. No. Um, probably won't learn a much about Bo either, but who we will learn a lot about is Ethan Grunkmeyer. Yeah, especially with and Jackson. no Jackson, no. Mm -hmm. yeah. With no Jackson Smolk because Smolk is out for a, a significant mm -hmm. uh, time with a serious injury. James Franklin has not mentioned what that specific injury is. He has not put a timetable on it. Um, but in my mind, significant means he's going to miss at least part of, if not all, of the fall because. Um, Franklin tends to, you know, if he's not, if they're not going to play, sorry, if they're out for the season, Franklin usually will say something. If he doesn't, it usually mm -hmm. means there's a chance for return. Mm -hmm. um, that being said, no offense to Jackson Smoke. If Jackson Smoke was playing in anything but garbage time for Penn State this year, there it, it probably wasn't for a good reason. Um, so, uh, we're going to see a lot of Ethan Grugmeyer in this game, which is, I think is going to be really fun to watch, uh, see how he is yeah. in his development. He's been receiving good 
remarks from Franklin, from Drew, uh, from the coaching staff throughout the spring. So I'm excited. From to us. See, <laughs> yeah, from us. From us. From us. I'm excited to see what he can do this this spring. Uh, but yeah, like I said, it, I think it's a good opportunity for them to throw the ball deep, see what they can do throwing it into uh, the wind uh, or against the wind. And, you know, it, this is going to be the weather come fall. Um, yeah. In Half Valley, we talk about that gauntlet they're going to go through in October. You're not exactly playing, you know, in Los Angeles every game. That gauntlet you're playing at home in State College, you're playing in Columbus, and you're playing in Madison. It's going to be cold. It's going to be windy. It's Mm -hmm. going to be Big Ten football. Uh, So, yeah, I think that's a really good point by you there. Uh, And then with saying on the offense, just how would the wide receivers play? Uh, Mm -hmm. Who's going to be in that wide receiver room on Saturday? Who's not? Yeah. Um, if anybody's missing, is it due to injury? Is it due to other reasons? Um, so that would be interesting. And then running backs, I'm very intrigued to see what we see out of somebody like uh, a Cam Wallace. Yeah. Uh, uh, we already discussed, you know, last episode, uh, Katron Allen probably won't play much to begin. He probably wasn't going to be play much to begin with. We haven't seen him back to back practice now. I'm guessing that means he's probably a little bit banged up here. Probably nothing to worry about, but mm-hmm. why why risk him? Why risk him? Um, same thing that could be said about Nicholas Singleton, but that means there's opportunities for Cam Wallace. There's opportunities for Quinton Martin, which I'll be interested to see how he how much he plays. He played, he practiced yeah. this week, but um, he did miss a few practices this spring as well. So uh, I think uh, I think it'll be interesting to see how the young guys perform uh, the most this this Saturday. And I think people know this, but I'll say it anyway. Penn State's going to keep a lot of things close to the vest. They're not going to reveal anything. So all these deep passing concepts where they're going to try to get receivers open and everything, and Drew Drew's not going to throw 70, 80-yard bombs to try right. to prove a point. It is going to be short passing, the swing routes that we've seen at practice. And I think that's just an element. They're, they're practicing that. Andy Kotel, Nicky, watch what he did at Kansas. Most of that, 80, 90% of that is coming with him to Penn State. So the emphasis on getting the ball out quickly, making the right first read, and being smart with the football, getting the football to playmakers in space. That's what you're going to see. You're not also going to see any of these complex blitz schemes from from Tom Allen on the defensive side of things. Again, it's a glorified 15th and final practice. I I don't mean to diminish it. I think it's a good buffer to get people ready to go. Because Terry Smith said this. He's like, like, you know, hey, it's going to be an electric Saturday. You know, business, commerce comes back into the area. It does good for the local town. So I'm glad there's there's that element of it. You can tailgate. It's a fun Saturday. The weather is supposed to be at least tolerable. It's just supposed to be windy. It's supposed to be upper 50s, cloudy, but it's going to be windy. So bring bring a hoodie. (laughs) Bring a hoodie, right? Um, Spring and State College. But this is, like I said, this is a good buffer, a good tease for Penn yeah. State football coming up in the fall. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's something, you know, um, uh, for, uh, you know, we got baseball season, thankfully, right now, which is nice. But uh, mm-hmm. uh, we all itch for football, I think, yes. after a certain point in the offseason. And this kind of fulfills that itch a little bit. And then, mm-hmm. you know, before you know it, we're going to be talking about official visits. And then, yes. uh, you know, and then before you know that, it's one month off and – then it's right into football. I mean, it, it, there really isn't that long until football season returns to, uh, to our lives. And it's going to go even faster. Cause like we said, there's a spring game this, this weekend, but then you got Mm -hmm. the transfer portal uh, from April 15th to April 30th. And we talked about that. That's going to probably be busy for Penn state, at least outgoing. I don't know about ingoing, but outgoing it, 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 it's going to be busy. Um, or should be. Um, May will be a little quiet, but then official visits in June, July. We all get to take our last, you know, summer vacation, enjoy mm-hmm. uh, having no football for one month because starting in August, it's yeah, it's pedal to the metal for the next, well, until maybe January, and then we start the process all over again. Uh, and and the off season's even shorter next year because of the college football playoffs. So. Uh, yeah. it's it's going to truly become a never-ending cycle uh, here very shortly. We're going to wrap it up. Which players? Now, we've already named some of them, like Ethan Grunkmeyer, Cam Wallace, but which players absolutely need to have a solid performance at the Blue-White game? We're going to discuss that on the other side of this break. 
And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel, the official sports book of Locked On. It's playoff time in the NBA and the NHL, and baseball's in full swing, and FanDuel is the place to bet on each and every game. Right now, new customers will get $150 in bonus bets. That's right, $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, win or lose. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on an app that is safe, secure, and super easy to use. What are you waiting for? All you got to do is visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. That is FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. That's FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Which players absolutely need this spring game to showcase their talents, to move up on the depth chart? Well, there's some few names to that you need to know for Blue and White 2024. And if you're not already, become an everyday or subscribe to Locked On Nittany Lions on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts for the latest conversations around your favorite Penn State sports teams. You can keep up with Dylan on X and also check out his work at Happy Valley Insider. Com. Let us know in the comments which players you are looking forward to seeing play at the blue-white game. And that's what we're going to do in this final segment. So in addition to e Ethan Grunkmeyer, this is obviously huge for him because this is a almost an early turning point for his career. Can he capitalize? And it's a shame that Jackson Smolik is hurt, but can he capitalize on this opportunity? There's a third running back spot open. If Katron Allen does have some bumps and bruises, as we've talked about, Cam Wallace could see more playing time. Quentin Martin could see more playing time. Corey Smith isn't on campus, but that's why you enroll early, right? That's why they encourage it. That third wide receiver spot after Julian Fleming and Trey Wallace. When is it Amari Evans' turn? I've For the past two years, Dylan, I have heard that Amari Evans is ready to break out. It's his time to shine. He is the wide receiver waiting in the wings to take that next step. They view him very highly in his development. Is this going to be his chance? We saw him. He had a big spring game, big spring game last time in 2023 with Drew when Amari Evans, you know, against essentially padded the box score. But don't expect a lot of Nicholas Singleton. Of course, you know what we know about Catron Allen. Uh, players like Deny Dennis Sutton, right? I don't think Julian Fleming and Trey Wallace are going to play all that much. Players that you know are anchors in the starting lineup, aside from the quarterbacks, right? Because the quarterbacks don't get hit. They're not going right. to, no, no one is going to hurt them. And, and right. that James Franklin will be on your case if you dare lay a finger on Aller, Prabula, and Grunkmeyer, especially with the Smolik injury. But those are the, the, the players that are really, I, I think, given the competitions, your, your third string running backs, your third string wide receivers, or your, like your third wide receiver in the offense. Are there some defensive guys that, that need a game? Like, again, Deny Dennis Sutton's not going to play. Abdul right. Carter's not going to play all that much. And the blue team's going to win because it's going to be compromised mostly of, of starters in this case. We all know that. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Overall, I, I think this is really a game to showcase your depth and showcase those young and upcoming talents. Some yeah. guys who flash in this game, we may not see in the fall. It, it, that is uh, how this sometimes Good works. Yeah. Um, now, I like, like you said, that third running back spot, I think I mentioned it really interesting spot to watch because you know james franklin and jay one side have been pretty vocal to running back recruits this cycle in 2025 that nicholas singleton katron allen they're gone after this year uh they they're are. they're they planning, are. penn state is fully expecting and planning on those two to leave for the nfl after this season as they I should as they should i don't think anybody should be surprised by that um if they return it's probably because one of them got injured um but at the end of the day, one, but at least one, but most likely both of those guys are gone in 2025. So that does open up a spot for one of the current guys on the roster to be the starting running back in 2025. Is that going to be a Quinn and Martin? Is that going to be a Cam Walls? Um, it feels like a really important game for London Montgomery, who has yes. kind of become the lost name back there james yeah. franklin has said he struggled to gain weight he's still 185 pounds which kind of hmm. makes it tough for him to take that next step in his development so i mean there's there's those three at running back which is really interesting because penn state's already got two running backs committed in that 2020 class and there may be more on the way in the near future as well uh people go to have valley inside penn state and uh it's one of our most recent future casts uh 
for uh, a running back prospect who's set to make a decision in the next, uh, well, when is this going up? Uh, going up Thursday. Going up Thursday. So by the time uh, if somebody's watching this, uh, Penn State may have a third running back. Commit. But yeah. they're, they're, they've been preaching that, uh, not preaching, but they've been saying that they're going to you know lose those two. So it'll be interesting to see the running backs and how they progress. And uh, with those running backs as well, how do they feel coming out of the spring, going into the fall, about their standing on the depth chart going forward? Mm -hmm. Uh, Because there are going to be two, potentially three running backs coming in next fall, next spring. Um, Wide receivers, everybody in the wide receiver room that's not Julian Fleming, or Harrison Wallace kind of needs a big, you know, end to their spring. Uh, will Keandre Lambert Smith be there after not uh, practicing on Tuesday? That's something that's going to be really interesting to watch and look out for. You know, the offensive line is going to probably be a rather younger offensive line we see on Saturday. How are they going to go up against a front seven that's replacing quite a bit of people on the defensive line? Uh, I mean, uh, right. we know what the defensive tackles are going to bring. Uh, but and we know what mostly the defensive ends are going to bring, so I don't think there's too much there to watch. But that linebacker room is going to be interesting. How is Tony Rojas going to look? How is um, the other young linebackers, Kavion Keys, Tamir Robinson? Uh, the list goes on and on. How they look, and then the secondary. Uh, I think Penn State, you got to feel pretty good about your secondary, but it's also a young secondary. They lost a lot of talent back there. How are those yeah. young guys going to continue their development? How what will we see of AJ Harris? Uh, Jalen Kimber and, and those guys, uh, King Mack, Dakari Nelson. Uh, we go on and on. So I, I think it's just going to be a great opportunity to see some of these young guys for an extended period of time for the first time really in their Penn State careers on Saturday. And right, the the entire conversation around this is uh, defense is secure, right? The question marks, the reason Penn State didn't reach new heights is because of the offense. So Andy right. Kotelnicki, the competitions at wide receiver, the back of running backs, those are important given that the offense was holding the defense back a season ago. Dylan, I, I want to thank you so much for the time. Again, as always, two amazing, awesome conversations. Let us know down in the comments what you're expecting for the blue and white game. If you want to keep up with Dylan, check out happyvalleyinsider.com. You can follow him on X. And if you like these conversations, subscribe to Locked on Nittany Lions on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. Dylan, thanks so much for the time as always, and I'm excited and eager to see you on Saturday at the Blue White Game. Yeah, excited to see you too, Zach, and uh, yeah, it should be a fun one. Once again, thanks for checking out this episode of Locked On Nittany Lions. Remember to like and subscribe and let me know your thoughts down in the comments. And don't forget, Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube, and now it's available on Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channels app. Locked on Sports Today is here for you 24-7 covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On plus the national shows covering each and every league. You can find Locked On Sports Today now available on YouTube and on the free Fire TV channels app.